Hi everybody! I'm doing a 45 minute animal communication session, so I'm going to be doing a journey into Tabitha the Chihuahua today, and I'm going to be sharing energy work and wisdom with Tabitha. And I'm going to go ahead and read the goals for the session, and then I'm going to be getting started. Okay, says, Hi Abby, this journey is for my Chihuahua, Tabitha. Tabitha has been away from her doggy companion, Bunny, for about a month. I'm not sure if that is the cause for Tabitha's problem or not, but she is showing signs of low self-esteem and depression. Will you please see what you can do for her? Thank you so much in advance for your help. And P.S. Tabitha recently experienced abdominal pain due to eating a rawhide that became lodged in her tummy. She was able to pass it, but the memory of that pain may also factor into whatever she is going through right now. Okay. I'm just absorbing the energy here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to relax now. Something does definitely feel um, feel hard to process. Just reading it, just reading what you've shared with me. But I'm gonna just clear my mind and clear my senses and we'll see what comes up. Yeah, because I, I feel really um, sensitive. I feel sensitive in my throat and sensitive around my ears too. And this is a, this is an emotional sensitivity, but there's also more to it than that. <laughs> and I, and I'm actually kind of um, I feel a bit jumpy and uh, like even talking right now, I'm like <laughs> I feel kind of like shaky and jibbery. I feel like this. So I'm just gonna slow down Tabitha's energy field because <sighs> it's hard to do energy work um, when you're going through sporadic energies like this. <laughs> So just calming things down. Ah, you just keep seeing her ears have, uh, I don't know, they're like bricks in them. That doesn't mean her ears hurt. It can mean something else. When I see ears bothering human beings, it can have something to do with communication. And seeing that there's problems in the ears and the throat, there can be something about communication going on here, but what kind of doggy communication are we talking about exactly? Let me just keep moving forward. I'm just gonna continue to relax her down because her energy is just like, like popping, like <laughs> So I'm just relaxing her down some more. All right. She's got all kinds of stuff going on in her energy field. Man, I don't even know where to begin. Because <laughs> she's got uh, even something going around in her mental body. So I'm going to start with the throat here. And I do see her choking. So this might have something to do with the rawhide too. But I'm just literally just gently massaging it. And it's all energy, okay? But it feels quite good when you do this. <laughs> and I'm touching her mind and telling her everything's going to be okay, Tabitha. And uh, I'm just relaxing the energy in her ears. And these, they're literally like bricks. So I'm just going to just see if I can literally take them out and then set them aside. I mean, she needs a lot of peace of mind. That's for sure. She needs a lot of peace of mind. She's just stressed out like crazy. She's just crazy stressed out. <laughs> I'm still taking these bricks, which is just energy. It's just dense, congested energy. And I'm just moving them aside, okay? So the more that I do this, it encourages our energy field to say, okay, I guess I can move this energy aside now. This is helping um, tremendously because her mind is shifting. But she feels like if she had eyes, she would be crying a lot. 
But just talking about this is creating stress um, it to come instantly back to her mind and her ears too. And her throat is getting stressed out again. So I'm just going to continue to relax her. And we're going to slow down time so Tabitha can talk to me just at a different time speed. <laughs> She's talking so fast. Okay. All right, so she's quite frantic, and uh, I'm just going to keep up with this pace, but um, it, none of this is probably going to make any sense, but she's just showing me there's rocks in her head, and one is just like a giant rock, and, and it's weighing down her mind. So I'm going to lift this up and out, which is, again, encouraging her energy field to know that we can, we can lift the weight. We can lift the burden and we can let go of the burden. I have a feeling that this session for Tabitha is going to be helping everybody who's watching. So if any of you out there have stress in your mind, we're going to lift that out too. <laughs> we're lifting it out of Tabitha. I can feel it lifting out my own weird rocks in my own head. <laughs> but here, it's okay to lift the burden out. All right. This is, this is really helping because she needs constant um, reassurance, constant uh, support and, and nurture that helps her to, to just, to just relax. Everything's going to be okay energy that safety uh, feeling that everything is going to be okay. Uh, so I'm just continuing to send this. Yeah, she's just really like, uh, the, the next thing we're going to be looking at has something to do with the heart and the digestive system. So that very well could have a lot to do with this, but and I don't know for sure, but we are looking at the heart and the digestive all the while continuing to do the same thing here with the mental body region, the throat, all that. Just continuing to send relaxing safety vibes as I look at this. S I keep screaming, somebody hurt me, somebody hurt me, somebody hurt me. <laughs> somebody hurt me, somebody hurt me. <laughs> That's what it keeps saying inside of her. And I show Tabitha a rawhide. And I show her what I found out about this. And I say, there's nobody that, that actually hurts you. It was an accident. Let's see what she says. Um, she's crying because it hurts so bad. So bad, so bad hurts. And she doesn't have the ability to understand what's going on when things hurt. So she just gets jittery. She just gets really jittery and confused. Extremely stressed out. And there's echoes of, of pain going on. Pain going through her body. There's echoes of this. I mean, really loud echoes. Like she's still enduring it. I mean, it, it's so loud that it's like she's in a state of shock, um, but panic, anxiety. I mean, it's just a lot, um, a lot. I'm going to ask her about Bunny here. I'm, I'm literally, I'm just touching her heart. I'm touching her stomach. I'm touching her digestive. I'm touching her body in many places because I can have a million hands in the energy realm, you know? So I'm just touching her in many places just to create more safety energies going into those places that it's going to be okay. You can relax now. But she doesn't necessarily believe me. And uh, so I ask her about Bunny. And uh, she's just, she, her energy field does shift. I just, I just say bunny and show her the idea of another dog named Bunny. It 
and she's just looking at bunny right now like like literally the stress and the shakes and the, all of this just just whoosh. and she's just looking at bunny right now it's like she's waiting for bunny to tell her what to do <laughs> so i'm going to become bunny for a moment i don't even know how to be bunny right now i'm just uh, suddenly i'm just not really give me a second here let me think for a minute okay so I, I become bunny and I create the effect of like laying down in a bed. And so I jump on the bed and I'm just lying down on the bed and I'm, I'm emanating what is relaxation and peacefulness. And I just, I just am a relaxed, peaceful dog just laying on the bed and I see Tabitha laying on the bed and watching me showing her it's okay to relax. I'm not afraid. I feel safe. I feel confident. I feel secure. And somehow that um, Tamitha wants to mimic that energy too. So Bunny gives her some security. <sighs> but I still see her struggling um, on the inside and she hurts inside. <sighs> it's like... Uh, I don't know if you ever accidentally swallowed like a Dorito that you, you just it's like for some reason it would it's sharp and you can feel it going down <laughs> and it's like ow you know and you can feel it going down but it, it kind of has that like sharp um edge to it <sighs> but I don't I feel it more in the like uh how, I don't know what all the these organs are here, but um, it feels more than it feels beyond the stomach. Because my stomach is starting to not feel good, but that whole region in there is starting to feel sensitive, and my neck is getting really tight as well. We're just going to continue to move through every little energy vent. And as we continue to move through them, we actually are making energetic shifts in progress here. Okay. I'm going to let everything I've accomplished so far just hang out over here and continue to share the love. And now I'm just going to go into whatever spirit wants to show me about the rawhide incident. Okay. Okay. What can I do to heal any leftover uh, feelings, physical feelings, emotional feelings, anxiety, stress related to this rawhide incident? So um, the first thing I, I experience is fear that I'm going to die, fear of dying. I mean, that literally is what it's like. I walk into kind of a, a dark, shadowy, rainy place. And I, I feel damp and dreary. And I feel like I can't um, go on much longer. And that I'm going to perish. I'm going to die. I feel this. This is the image that goes along with it. The feeling of dying. And fear of dying. So I let the rain stop falling and I clear away the clouds and the sun comes out. And uh, I see this girl standing and it's an empty street and lots of old kind of broken buildings. And she looks uh, like she's uh, dressed in an old and older time. Um, I don't know, it's just tattered old dirty clothes like she would have lived uh, poorly or maybe been an orphan on the street or something like this. Anyway, when the sun comes out, it's so bright and blinding that she actually covers her eyes or she's shielding her eyes, but it's, it's bothering her eyes how bright it's gotten. She uh, starts to get overwhelmed and it feels noisy in her ears. And I continue to feel a lot of sensations of pain in my stomach, like my whole digestive region and going even going down. So I'm just venting this out for her. Okay. Relaxing. Wow, that feels better already. 
and uh, this girl in the picture is starting to adjust to the sunlight so it's not so blinding and she wants to remember uh, brighter days, happier days, sunnier days. So I transform the building so they're not broken and I transform her clothes so she's wearing like a very beautiful uh, high class like a um, fancy dress and she's walking down a very fancy street. She doesn't believe me. She doesn't believe me. <laughs> she says that's not real though. I say, so the sun can come out, but your clothes must remain tattered and the buildings must remain broken. Why do they have to remain broken and tattered? Why does that have to be the reality? Why does it have to be the reality? Why can't we alter the reality into something more vibrant and carefree for the time frame that you're showing me? And uh, she, she's not going to allow me to change things. She's uh, walking the street. It's empty. And she walks beyond the buildings and she just wants to be alone. There's kind of a bitterness and an unresolved anger inside of her. And she just wants to be alone. But that's not actually true. She doesn't want to be alone. But something in this uh, experience here, and this isn't necessarily Tabitha the dog, okay? This is like Tabitha the soul and soul memories of other times and places. And so in the soul memory, there's a, a very hardship experience. And uh, the soul, having processed this experience, just wants to withdraw. Just wants to withdraw. Why do human beings want to withdraw? Do we just not believe that anybody will love us or nurture us? It's not a safe world. The only person I can rely on is myself. Um, when we experience that in the human world, the soul remembers and it too can mimic the memories of the, of the incarnate state. So it can do this in the spirit realm too. So I see this part of Tabitha's soul is, is walking away from everything. And just wants to walk away from it all. But the sun does keep shining. And she's walking towards a very big open field. And again, there's a lot of pain developing in the stomach. Um, I'm starting to feel a lot of pain. Like It's like an acid reflux pain. It's like a burning, kind of burning pain. Um, and it's not terrible, but it's not... Um, it's not pleasant either. It's un, it's there's discomfort to it, but it's tolerable discomfort. I just see uh, I see her walking through the field and then walking beyond the field. She doesn't stop, but she walks into a very dark forest. And I say, "What's up with you and walking into dark, uh, gloomy things? What is it that you're looking for in the dark?" So I follow her. There's just a strange shift in energy. There's exhaustion in the mind. There's sleepiness feelings. I feel like I need to lay down here and go to sleep feelings. And uh, the image isn't so uh, tangible. It's it's getting it's fading, but it's still there. And I see the girl. It's like she's laying down um, too in this muddy, dirty, um, wet leaves. Uh, the trees have no leaves on them. It's dark and dingy. The sun can't reach her here. And it's just like she died here. <sighs> In a bad way, though. <laughs> it's like we're walking into a dark forest where... I mean, I keep thinking of a knife being stabbed into the stomach and then just laying in the forest with a bloody stomach. <sighs> but it's actually peaceful, though. It's peaceful right now. 
It's not uh, horrifying, and the discomfort in my stomach is not there. It's just dissipating. And, but I will say it, there's still like a clench and a sensitivity, um, a tightness, but it is a, a lot more peaceful. The mind, the stress, the ears, the throat, everything is actually relaxing. Just me following through with this image and where this image is going and where it is taking us. So I'll just throw it out there as an idea because it's it's not energetically loud enough for me to say that's that's is actually a legit thing, um, but it's showing me just a murder scene and um, a stab in the stomach and then um, being in the woods, laying in the woods. But nothing is traumatizing when she lays down in the woods. When I look at her laying down in the woods, these images come to my mind. But as they come to my mind, everything starts to relax and there's no more fear or concern or worry anymore. And I tell her it's okay to fall asleep if you want to fall asleep. And I go and I pick her up and I tell her, but the dark, dingy forest is no place for you to light, light to rest. And I just pick her up and I walk her through the woods. And I can't believe how long of a walk this is, but these woods go a very long ways. This dark patch of woods goes for a very long ways. But I'm going to walk her all the way to the other side of the woods. To something that is beyond all of this, all of this suffering. To walk her body beyond all of this suffering, okay? We're going to put all of this suffering behind us kind of thing by allowing it to just go to rest now, go to a state of peacefulness. But I'm carrying this part of her um, beyond this place, to heaven kind of thing. But it's not easy because uh, even in my determination um, and and uh, security and confidence in this, there is uh, there's trouble along the way. And the forest, um, as it gets brighter, it again gets darker. And I still haven't gotten out of this. And there's lots of fallen trees and I find myself uh, stumbling or having a hard time keeping my balance and even tripping and falling and holding Tabitha, the, the girl body, <laughs> um, in my arms and I fall with her. And the ground opens up and swallows us both inside of it. There's nothing to see right now. There's just pure dark. There's nothing that I can feel about this right now other than it's pure dark. But this is exactly where we need to be. And the girl is standing on her feet now and we're standing side by side and I'm looking at her and she's awakening to this dark place. And I tell her, why does it have to be so dark? It could be whatever you want it to be. And again, she's uh, looking for something in the dark here. Like she was walking into the dark forest, like trying to find something only to find an event where she is lying down to rest. Now we're walking towards yet another thing. And down here, she's trying to find something. But... Uh, I will say there's a lot of stress to building and tension and it's getting uh, really tight, okay? And I'm just literally relaxing this energy down too and I'm just going to let her do whatever she feels she needs to do. I can't tell her what to do. She's going to just decide for herself, which is awesome. It's always the best way. And as I just continue to just relax the space and just let her do her thing in here, the light does start to shine a bit. I don't know where the light's coming from. It just seems to have bits of light here and there. And 
And I say, what if you are trying to find yourself? How will you find yourself? If you are already yourself. Then I show this little girl, Tabitha, the dog. And Tabitha comes in the room and just is sort of like a dog and just starts sniffing around. And the little girl does stop to look at Tabitha, the dog, and she's kind of in wonder of what this is. And everything starts to change and now we find ourselves back in the dark forest again. Not swallowed up by the darkness, but um, in the forest. And Tabitha the dog keeps sniffing around the trees and sniffing about. And the girl starts to turn into a ghost. And the ghost is asking Tabitha if she could find herself. Find where she is. And uh, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm going to change things up here for a minute. There's just a lot of energy going on, so it's a bit hard for me to talk right now. It's a lot to do with the mental body here and the ears, but there aren't, there isn't a heavy rock in the head. There's no bricks in the ears anymore. The throat isn't all jammed up. Um, the pain in my digestive is just totally subsided. Not a hundred percent, but there's still a little bit of a tinge of it there, but it's not, the discomfort is pretty much gone. The thing is here, um, and I can read this from the energy, is that, um, they're going to be looking for all eternity because there's a trick to this. There's a riddle to this. And the riddle is, when are you going to just let it go? Because sometimes we aren't meant to find that thing that we're looking for. Sometimes we're not too me meant to finish that, that lifelong project before we die. Sometimes we're not meant to. Is that a, a disgrace um, to... to uh, you know, is the universe disgracing you because it won't let you get to that answer or finish that thing before you die or this, you know, I was murdered before I ever this. This stuff happens all the time. You know, people have lives like this. And the power of overcoming this is letting go and not needing to know or to find or do anything else. Because once you let it go, you've completed the test and now in some other life, you're going to reap the reward in some other way and it's going to be great. <sighs> she hears me, but she doesn't like what I have to say because it was really bad. She says that, uh, so... <sighs> Again, there's this sort of um, energy about being murdered. And it's way worse than a knife in the gut. It's way worse than that. And um, she wants to find her body. She wants to find herself. But again, I tell her it doesn't matter how bad it is. Whether it was a bullet to the head or you're tortured for um, two months. It doesn't matter how bad it was. No matter which way it is, it's it's never fun, right? It's okay to let it go. It's okay to embrace something new now. She's uh, quite angry and bitter, and uh, she screams at me. And when she screams, her face turns to darkness, and it uh, it's like an explosion happens and then comes towards me. And I tell her it's okay because... Uh, this is helping her access her true feelings of what's not fair, what's not just, what's not right about the world. And I understand. But I'm going to tell you right now, no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, I'm telling you right now, the energy says that you will never find yourself until you choose to let go of trying to find yourself. She's just starts to fall to the ground and she cries. She's not a ghost anymore. She's just pale, 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 pale white. And Tabitha the dog is here looking at her. 
and uh, she just cries, cries, cries. And uh, she has an internal battle about this message, but she does understand that she feels wronged. She feels uh, an unjust event happened that has never been, um, that is an unjust event. And it must be, um, it, it, something must be done kind of thing. But nothing, nothing is meant to be done except for her to let it go. This, uh, she's still trying to tolerate this reality and, uh, the internal battle is becoming quite gruesome and she's burning from the inside like acid. This raw hide event is meant to kick up this lifetime <sighs> because this has got to be reconciled. It's no wonder Tabitha seems way out there. No wonder. And I don't know that it, I'm, I, f I feel that if Bunny were here, that Bunny would um, help Tabitha to cope. But Bunny's not here for a reason. Because Tabitha has to be unable to cope. Completely raw, emotionally, physically, mentally, all of this has to be Tabitha's learning. Not Tabitha with the help of Bunny's learning. It's Tabitha's learning. So, the rawhide was a good thing that happened. Because this has got to come clean. This does, she doesn't need to carry this burden anymore. And me just simply saying that in Tabitha's energy field to these parts of Tabitha, okay, helps her soul, helps her in so many ways. Because everything again is getting better. It's starting to relax even more than it was relaxed before. I can breathe. I can talk. I can rest. I can, you know, the jumpy, the anxiety, the stress, the weight, the burdens all subsiding. The pain in the stomach is almost done. It's still lingering a little bit there. Okay, but we're going to get through this. We just one thing at a time. So this is still relaxing and it's it's actually incredible the way that it feels. <laughs> I'm going to I guarantee you, Tabitha is going to be a whole new dog. <laughs> is going to be expressing herself in a new way. <sighs> okay. So the acid burning version of the girl it's just she's actually processing all of the extreme pain of what she had been through. And that is how a soul comes full circle. So, so one thing that I see is that when souls in an incarnate state go through an extremely traumatizing event, the soul leaves the event in order to not have to endure how bad that really was. Now a little sort of node of karmic energy, you could call it, um, a node of energy develops here. And eventually the soul will have to um, come full circle with this energy um, to relive the experience differently this time. But the soul needs to, in order to really let go, in order to really heal the node, the soul must return to the event, fully experience it for all that it was, which literally takes about this long <laughs> and then totally renewed, totally different energy, totally transformed. And uh, so I already see her just all the suffering is just, I mean, this whole place is starting to change. Like it's, it's about to totally drop off here. Everything is about to just totally let go. And my spirit guides um, say, you could imagine this is the relief um, as the rawhide finally gets out of the body. <laughs> this is a moment of relief when the, the suffering is no longer needing to be endured. So Tabitha the dog is enduring the suffering of what her soul could not endure fully when it was being murdered in another life, okay? So the rawhide is the energy node that Tabitha endured, 
came full circle on it. We're doing the energy work to help totally release all of the burden, transform Tabitha's vibes, help her feel awesome again. Because something hasn't even come full circle once that rawhide released. It didn't come full circle yet. This session is helping everything come full circle. <laughs> and... Uh, this uh, this may this same may seem it's just an idea that came to me, but now that I've done this energy work for Tabitha, and that this is a major event in her soul timeline that had to be come full circle, so I wouldn't be surprised if Bunny now finds suddenly is is returned. I don't know why Bunny's been gone for a month, but. I could see now Bunny is returned because Tabitha, the Bunny's influence, um, you know, Tabitha's come full circle, so now Bunny can return. Because the only way for Tabitha to actually properly come full circle was f to make sure Bunny wasn't there. Now Bunny can be there because everything's good to go now. <laughs> that's, a, that's the idea that came to mind. Your, Tabitha feels heavenly right now. There's absolutely zero pain in my digestive region. I feel like I can, I feel heavenly. I feel like I'm in the sunlight. I feel remarkable. I feel like not human and not dog either. I feel like, I feel awesome. <laughs> I feel beyond awesome. I feel out of this world good. It's amazing. I mean, it's so amazing. <laughs> this is better than winning the lottery. That's how good this feels. It just feels pure, radiating, blissful love. <laughs> like heavenly love. It feels like this. It's amazing. Ah, Tabitha feels this, is feeling this inside of herself and around herself. And I'm really just going to let all of her energy bodies just soak up this energy. Like dried up sponges, they're going to get the full effect. And that effect is going to linger for days and weeks and months, forever. It's just going to linger as long as it is called to linger, as long as she needs it to. So um, the more physical form of Tabitha um, has a memory of the suffering. Um, and the, the memory that it's just an energy program. Um, it's just an energy trauma. So on the more physical side of Tabitha, this is, um, you know, kind of worried that um, will it happen again? Am I okay to chew on the rawhide kind of thing? Like the physical body, the physical energy body needs um, some safety now, some, some more additional encouragement that this is okay now. You're okay now. It's hard to, uh, because the energy is so amazing, like it's so blissful. I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of this and to the physical body, to this part of the physical body, as a doggy treat. And I'm going to say it's safe now. And uh, I'm going to let Tabitha enjoy this doggy treat. <laughs> so there's a little bit of nervousness, but the instinct is kind of overcoming the nervousness. It's like the doggy instinct is immediately overcoming any resistance here. So doggy instinct is starting to come back, and doggy instinct is doing a great job. <laughs> Mm. So, what is the next thing I could tell you about this? This heavenly energy is still like just emanating. It's as in, it's like, um, 
thick, 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 thick molasses of energy, and it's lots of it. And this heavenly energy is still radiating as thick and as full and as vibrant and as amazing as ever. It's still all there. And uh, even with this, I see, again, the physical, the more physical side, which is going to be absorbing this. Just give it time because the energy world and the physical world, they're they're all working together. They're just working it together at different layers. So it just takes time to soak it all into the physical body. But I see her just taking um, just a few days. It's like a recovery time and just resting. But she is so awesome right now. It, it's I, I can't even do anything else because it's just so awesome right now. I'm just seeing Tabitha in like a little like hospital bed. Like it's, it's just like an adorable little like um, dollhouse hospital bed or something. <laughs> and she's being like tucked in by a little doggy nurse. And it's like, you're going to be okay. <laughs> and she's just cozy and resting in this like safe little zone and in recovery. <laughs> that's, that's what the energy says. Tabitha is having a great recovery, but she needs rest. <laughs> and that old energy node and everything that we had seen about it is totally not there. Like it's dissolved. It's just pure heaven. She is so happy. She's You're going to feel like she's a happier dog than you've ever seen her to be. I feel like you, you're going to see her differently than you've ever seen her before. She even feels more confident. She feels more secure. She doesn't feel like she would be dependent on Bunny like I I would. I mean, there's something about Bunny and how Bunny helps Tabitha um, find security. But now that Tabitha has got, come full circle with some hardcore soul stuff, Tabitha is going to have a lot more security within herself that she doesn't need it from Bunny in order to feel safe inside herself. She's going to have it inside of herself. So I see Tabitha is actually, you, you may notice her not only just being so much brighter and happier, but secure, acting more like secure, confident in herself. Hmm. That's literally all I can do. So that was so random and cool. You really never know what what you're gonna get. <laughs> you just don't. <laughs> I'm gonna take just a second here to come back to myself and just disconnect here from Tabitha's energy. So she can go do her thing. I'm gonna go do my thing. I'm excited for Tabitha. I'm excited for you. And I mean, I'm excited by what is, what is to come here in the very, like, like very soon. <laughs> you are going to see a totally new dog. <laughs> I can tell. I feel like a totally new person from this energy work. All right. <sighs> I'm kind of out of it. So I'm going to try my best to say thank Thank you, super duper thank you for this amazing experience. Thank you for sharing so others can, can go through the process with us and maybe heal some of their own soul stuff. Thank you very much for sharing. And uh, for those of you interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I wish you all a wonderful day.